her phone. So is there a role for someone who can't stand the sight of blood yes. who wants to volunteer? You could be a dispatcher. <laughs> All you have to do is basically you're in charge of um, making sure that uh, the functions down here are going mm -hmm. uh, appropriately. If we're out on a job, you're out you're answering the phones, you're making sure you know where we are. <laughs> and how, how long is a shift? What are the shifts like? For dispatchers, two hours a week. And what about the regular staff? Regular staff, we come in either four hours, five hours um, during the day, mm -hmm. or we have uh, 12 or 14 hour shifts at night. So is it a 24 hour around we the are, clock? We are here. Is it fun at night here? Very fun. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing the information with me. I really appreciate Absolutely. it and I'm sure our viewers do. Thank you, David. Thank, thank you, Kelly. You. Hi, we're here with Reed Eddles from the Westfield Rescue Squad. Hi, Reed. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. And um, you're the man to speak to when we want to know about the Westfield Rescue Squad. Can you give us a little bit of background about it? Well, prior to 1951, the ambulance squad was uh, part of the fire department. It was run by the fire department. They had two Cadillac ambulances over at the firehouse on North Avenue. And if an ambulance call came in, the firemen would take the ambulance and go on a call. Right. Well, what happened, there was a large fire in Westfield, and the firemen were busy fighting the fire. And a call for the ambulance came in, and there was nobody to send. So Garwood was called in mutual aid, and they had to come in and handle the ambulance call. Well, the mayor at the time, I believe was Mayor Bailey, mm -hmm. said that Westfield should have their own independent volunteer rescue squad. All the other towns, Scotch Plains, Fanwood, Garwood, Clark, they all had volunteer rescue squads, but Westfield did not. So the mayor and the council uh, requested the American Red Cross to contact some instructors and ask them to form the nucleus for a rescue squad, which they did in 1951. Right. And it was started by uh, Irv Arendale, who was the uh, uh, instructor uh, with the Red Cross and uh, up until 1954 the rescue squad operated out of the firehouse with one ambulance Oh, really? and um, they were there on duty from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Monday to Friday and 6 a.m. to, to uh, midnight and Saturdays and Sundays until this building was built in 1954. Okay. Once the building was built then the rescue squad became a separate entity and handling all the ambulance calls. And so ha over the years, has the staff grown? Has the rescue squad had grown? It, it has changed, it's grown. Uh, uh, now we have members that are as young as 17. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the early 70s, we had our first female member that came on the squad. I wasn't around then, <laughs> but, uh, and we have uh, about 50% female and 50% male members now. And how long have you been with the squad? I'm in my 24th year. Wow, that's some service. That, that's really great. And it's all volunteer. We're 100% volunteer. And how do you get your funding? We, uh, we do a fun drive once a year in March. Mm -hmm. We send out letters to the residents and businesses. And they uh, generously give donations to the squad. Uh, we get no funding from the town. Uh, which is, this is, it's amazing. I, I, I know I've spoken to so many different groups in Westfield, and the, the people in this town are generous and they support. And ha, do you, uh, is that the same kind of um, situation you find here that the people do, in fact, give a lot? Westfield supports its rescue squad, uh, and it's very uh, helpful that we don't have to rely on the town. Right. If we did rely on the town, it could be increased in taxes, you could be charged for your service. And We've we don't want that. We've never charged for the service in, in, in this town. We're 100% volunteer, and the generosity of the residents and businesses in this town that will support this squad. Well, that's very commendable. It's commendable about Westfield, also about your, your, your organization. I mean, I know you run a tight ship here. Um, I had an opportunity to look around, and I see the people are dedicated. It's state-of-the-art. These are our sleeping quarters. We have uh, five bunk beds here. Uh, the evening crews stay all night, and they sleep here. Uh, also, sometimes the day crews, they want to catch a nap, they'll sleep here also. And uh, should the uh, bell go off, if a call comes in from the police, the bell will wake you up. And so uh, this is where the crews sleep. And uh, then we go out here. This is the main operations room, where usually the crews uh, will sit here waiting for the calls to come in. During the week, Monday to Friday, we have a dispatcher that sits at this desk, volunteer dispatcher in two hour shifts. Their responsibility is handling calls from the police or citizens that would call in. They would, the call would come in, they would write it down and dispatch the duty crews that would be sitting here or maybe sleeping or downstairs watching TV. Uh, but there's always somebody here in this building 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Down here, uh, we have the men's room and the ladies room. Down here is our kitchen, which we recently remodeled. 
Uh, we try to make it friendly for the crews. We have a stove, microwave, coffee machines, uh, and you can bring your own food or you can eat here, whatever you want. But, but since the crews stay here overnight, uh, we have provision for them to use the uh, kitchen. Down here, uh, this is where many of the crews uh, stay on or relax when they're not going on calls. We have a pool table here. We have a large television screen. Uh, we have a DVD player, VCR, uh, where they can watch, watch television, listen to music. Uh, many of the students uh, choose to study, and they have a table there where they'll sit and they'll uh, study for exams. Uh, and uh, as you scan around the wall, we have pictures here from when the rescue squad started in 1951. Pictures on the left here are when the building was built, and every Memorial Day since 1951, from top to bottom, you'll see the pictures of the squad, uh, which we gather on Memorial Day for a picture and a picnic afterwards. We are a resident squad, one of the few left in the state. Our members pulled their duty from the building, so if a call came in, you jump on the ambulance and you go out on the call. Okay. Many squads in the area have to rely on pagers. They come out from home or where they work. So you have somebody here at this particular location 24-7? Correct. We have one, at least one crew on duty 24 hours a day. Sometimes we have two crews, sometimes we have three crews, but we always have at least one. And are you always looking for volunteers? How does that work? We're always looking for volunteers. And, and the training is a little rigorous, would you say? Yes, but uh, we, you have to take the EMT course, okay. which is a state course, but we give it right here at the rescue squad. We are a training center with our partner, Less Stress Instructional Services, and all the classes are given right here. That's fantastic. And do you, is there ever a shortage of volunteers? There's always a shortage of volunteers. Really? Well, then I'll say this to all the people who are viewing. If you have an interest, come and speak see Reed, because I think we can certainly use your help. We can. Um, I hear you had an interesting story that someone, uh, you had to help deliver a baby. Would you like to tell us about that? <laughs> well, it's many, many years ago, but I've been fortunate to deliver two babies. Uh, one was probably about 20 years ago, a boy, and one was about 10 years ago, uh, a little girl. Really? And, um, you know, you do what you're trained to do, and uh, everything was nice. and uh, Everything kicks in? Right. And do the people who volunteer here come from various walks of life? Do you have to have a medical interest, or can you be just, you know, uh, someone who, let's say, is a librarian? We have people from all walks of life. We have school teachers, we have accountants, we have people that work in trades, we have... Uh, uh, retirees, uh, and we give all the training here, so any kind of uh, profession that you're in uh, will take you. And what do you find is to be the most gratifying part of doing this, Reed? When somebody says thank you, you go on a call and you hold their hand, and uh, they're really appreciative, and I, I think that's the gratification that we get here. Well, you do a wonderful job, and um, I, I, I hope I don't get to see you too much, <laughs> but thank you so much for your time, Reed. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Councilwoman.